First released in Japan in 1983 as the Family Computer and known today as the Famicom, this 8-bit unit was redesigned for the US market as the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES and appeared in some US test markets in October 1985. The NES sold until 1995 in North America but continued selling as the Famicom in Japan until September 2003. The NES was responsible for bringing us new and innovative games such as Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, and of course, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, which is still referred to as one of the greatest video games of all time. It became one of the best-selling consoles of its time, selling over 61 million consoles worldwide and was only beat by the PlayStation years later. One of the most famous add-ons to the NES was the Zapper. The original was grey, but because of US laws the year following its release, it had been changed to orange. The Zapper was compatible with games such as Duck Hunt that involved shooting ducks and have your trusty companion pick them up, Wild Gunman where you were challenged to a draw, Hogan's Alley that was basically about hitting the right target that would pop up around buildings and others such as Bayou Billy, Freedom Force and more. But another interesting add-on that is sought after today was the Robotic Operating Buddy or Rob for short. Unfortunately, Rob only had two games available for it, Gyromite and Stack Up. Gyromite combined regular gameplay that was interrupted by having to use Rob to move a spinning saucer to either a blue or red button that would open a door for your character to continue. During its lifespan, the NES has amassed over 700 games and is definitely a part of our history, part of the nostalgia of the 80s, and a unit that remains close to the heart of many retro gamers. Stick around and watch me take one apart and give it a new life. Hello everyone and welcome, I'm the Retro Repair Guy. The Nintendo Entertainment System from 1985, the original NES. Um, this is a machine that you might have seen in my other episodes, it was on the left up there to your right. Um, now I put the PS2 back up there because you know I had no space, I couldn't even, I don't know where to plug it and play with it anymore. Uh, but the thing is, is that the NES, I want to tell you, is something that's very near and dear to me. It's something I grew up with in the 80s. My brother and I used to play Mike Tyson's Punch-Out over and over and over again. Um, and I had like 200 games, and I'm not exaggerating, but I kept playing that one over and over. Uh, but anyways, um, this is a little machine. Like I said, I got rid of everything. I had the robot, I had the gun, I had everything. But um, I got rid of everything. I don't know where it went, who I gave it to. Uh, over the years so I got my hands on this one I don't know its history I don't know where I even bought it I just had it for a while uh, but this is a machine that I really really wanted to uh, rebuild to restore because I wanted to relive the, those times again and I want to get my hands on a Mike Tyson's punch out I don't have one unfortunately uh, I only have two games for it but uh, the thing is now and I do have the gun for it but I don't have the robot so anyways I won't keep you too long let's just jump right in and go take a look I began by testing one of the only two games I had on hand for the NES. The door barely holds up by itself and I see a crack in the corner. It looks like the unit was either dropped or something fell on it. The two cartridges are almost in new condition and they were wrapped in plastic so I know they function properly but I keep getting the flashing screen. While this could be due to a number of things, one of the most common is the cartridge not being detected and this could be because of the 72 pin connector or if the unit was dropped maybe the board is damaged. But since I intend to restore this unit, I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up.
It's clear that the 72-pin connector is in bad shape. It's barely gripping onto the cartridge. Looking up close, we can also see the contacts are extremely used. There's an old discontinued JRC voltage regulator from New Japan Radio Company. Components such as these tend to heat up a lot, so I'm going to help future-proof the unit by replacing it with a voltage regulator from Texas Instrument. To access all the capacitors and the tuner box, I have to unsolder it from the motherboard. Luckily, I have all the capacitors on hand as they are very common values. I'm replacing the capacitors with Nishikon capacitors. I make sure to clean the heatsink of all old thermal paste and I of course apply new thermal paste to the new voltage regulator. The new capacitors are longer, but are still small enough to fit into the box without obstructing the cover. And here is the completed tuner. There are only three electrolytic capacitors on the main board, which surprised me. Not even any surface mount ones. What's great about this board is that you don't even need the service manual as the values of the components are written right on the board. When soldering on this board, you'll just have to make sure that the solder melts through the holes as the board is double sided. The door is cracked and not holding properly. It looks like the unit was either dropped or something fell on it. 
Removing the door confirms that the tiny plastic pin at the end is broken, so I'll use some Gorilla contact glue. While that dries, I'm spraying the switch in the tuner with some electrical contact cleaner. Even though I threw the board in the dishwasher, I'm using an eraser to remove any buildup on the contacts and following that up with some contact cleaner and a toothbrush. I replaced the tuner on the board, but noticed one of the contacts was broken, so I repaired it with a small jumper. So a little note about the 72 pin connector. Um, I purchased this on the uh, jungle site. I think it was like 15, 16 dollars, something like that. So you're talking about what, two dollars US? <laughs> I don't know what the exchange. Uh, but look, the thing is, is that I wanna show you, look how loose it is. 36 years of in and out. So, you know, it got so loose and blowing in it just doesn't do it anymore. So did that sound weird? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> if it did, I apologize. Uh, the thing is, is that the <laughs> sorry. Okay, um, like seriously, it's really, really loose, right? You're talking about look, it doesn't hold on to anything. So you want to change that if you're going to be changing the uh, you know the capacitors and all that. But if you're getting that screen and it's not recognizing the cassette, uh, the cartridge there's a good chance this is the piece that you want to be changing. Um, for me, there was other problems as well. You're going to see, uh, or you have seen, depending where I put this in the video. But the thing is, is that uh, this is something you definitely want to look at and really worth uh, the price, especially after 36 years.
Well, even though I'm a bit rusty, everything seems to be working perfectly. The cartridges are, of course, difficult to put in and out, but that's a good sign. It means they're making contact. So it's beautiful, it's working, it's, uh, the door is holding by itself. The glue did a good job, I used some Gorilla Glue, but I want to say if you have any cracks uh, you want to fix, any pieces missing, any holes, uh, you know, major cracks on anything, by the way, it's plastic. You know what I found that really, re really works um, is the Marine Epoxy, uh, and I've used that several times for different applications. It's really, really amazing. You can sand it down, you can even add color to it when you're mixing it and it works wonders, okay? But it, it is sticky, y'all. Uh, wear some gloves, but it, it's amazing, okay? It really works. So uh, at the same time, I want to know if anybody knows um, some good HDMI mods for this. I was thinking of putting that upstairs in my living room and it's an LCD. Uh, so, you know, if anybody knows of good HDMI mods for this, please let me know in the comment section, as well if there's anything else that you want me to fix. Uh, please don't be shy, let me know, leave me some comments. I try to answer absolutely everybody. Send me an email. Get in touch with me. And aside from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>